everyone. Welcome to a primer on some words that you might need to know if you are shopping for a bra. This is kind of a part two to my anatomy of a bra video, but instead of talking about the little pieces and parts of a bra, we're gonna be talking about shapes and words that you'll find when you're shopping that you might need to know so that you can search and find the right kind of bra since a lot of us are shopping online right now. We're gonna go through shape, structure and bra types. And when we get to types, I'll go through some recommendations I have. I don't have recommendations for every bra type because I'm only giving recommendations that I or good friends of mine who are also really into bras really stand by. Let's talk about bra shapes. All right, so the first shape we're gonna talk about is full coverage. Obviously, this is the bra with the most coverage. It covers the entire breast from the root to the top. Generally, these are pretty tear-shaped and cover a lot of skin, both vertically like this and also horizontally. And then we have a plunge bra, which is pretty similar to a full coverage bra, but the inside of the wire doesn't come up as high and it has less coverage on the inside of the breast. This is often recommended for low cut shirts, but I also think that it can be a very good everyday t-shirt bra. Um, and then we have a demi bra, which is a bra that covers uh, like three fourths of the breast. It's less tear shaped than the full coverage or the plunge bra and the cup doesn't come up as high. So you tend to get a little more of a rounded lower cup line. And then we have the balconette. And the balconette <laughs> is kind of like the demi bra, but a little bit more intense. Um, so the cups tend to be pretty straight across. I don't know if this is actually why it's called that, but I always, Kind of think of it like when you have a, a balcony and it's just like jutting and it's like out and up and that's it. Uh, that's kind of what a balconette bra does. Um, but again, pretty similar to a demi bra, just a little more of a specific look. Then we have a half cup bra, which covers half of the breast. Uh, and then a quarter cup bra, which just covers uh, a tiny little bit of the breast. And then a frame bra with straps, basically. It's just straps. Uh, could technically have a wire. I don't actually know if I've seen one with a wire though, but there's no cup. And then this is less the shape of the cup and more the shape of the overall bra. But then we have a long line bra. Um, a lot of people will accidentally call a long line bra a bustier, but essentially the difference is a long line bra is a bra that is then, that then extends down. And a lot of the time the extension down will be boned. Um, whereas a bustier is usually constructed a little more like a corset and less like a bra. So that is our, that is our run through of bra shapes. So now let's take a look at bra structure. These are some terms that I think, uh, nobody really knows. Uh, and to be fair, there's a lot of words that, uh, people use here, but I think that the big thing that I want to impart upon you is that we have, instead of thinking about padded bras versus not padded bras, we have unlined versus lined bras. And then we'll also talk about soft cut bras. An unlined bra is a bra that has just thin fabric. So no structure is coming from a molded or padded cup. These are usually made up of one to three panels of fabric uh, and they can provide pretty much any level of support have a, a variety of functions. They're a very versatile kind of bra. I think that they are often maligned, especially in the US because the US uh, loves a t-shirt bra. And also generally, if you don't know how a bra should fit, then you have uh, an idea that all a bra does is give you nipple coverage. And since online bras don't do that, people don't like them. Lined bra is anything that has any kind of structure or padding coming from the cup's material. So if you hold up the bra, the cup is gonna hold its, its shape. A lot of people would look at a, a lightly lined bra and call it a padded bra, and others would say it has no padding. Uh, <laughs> so a lined bra, again, a very versatile term, but if you want a really smooth coverage uh, or just nipple coverage in general, you want a lined bra. So we have unlined, just fabric, lined, any kind of molding or structure 
padding type thing. Uh, and then we have a soft cup bra. And a lot of the time people will use the term soft cup to mean unlined. Soft cup specifically means you have molded cups with no underwire. Great. So now we're going to move into general categories of bra. This is not extensive because there are a million kinds of bra, but these are the ones that I think most people look for. And I am going to include recommendations that I have. And if they're not ones that I wear, they're ones that I really liked when I sold bras or bras that, again, I have friends who are really into bras and they swear by them. So I will try to include options that have a variety of uh, size options, a variety of price points and all of that. One thing uh, I will say, you might notice that a lot of the things I call t-shirt bras, you might not consider a t-shirt bra, but uh, you know, it depends on your t-shirt. I'm doing the best I can. <laughs> um, okay, so t-shirt bra. It's a very vague term that can really mean any kind of t-shirt that is invisible under a t-shirt. Often this means it has a smooth seam on the cup, but it can also mean that it's cut so that the seams lay closer to the chest um, and don't show under a shirt. It can be lined to any degree and come in a variety of skin tones, or you don't really need to look for a skin tone if you're wearing it under shirts that are not uh, white usually. So my recommendations for these are truly some of my favorite bras of all time. Uh, I think one one thing I would recommend is if you're looking at these and you're like, oh, but these aren't going to be as invisible as this one bra I like. You might be surprised when a bra fits really well, it is going to be more invisible than you would expect. Um, and also, it's just nice to have pretty bras that you wear every day. I think the idea that a, an everyday bra has to be really uh, boring is simply not true. And we have a strapless bra. Uh, this is a bra with no straps. Strapless bras have to fit you really, really well. If your strapless bra doesn't fit, that's a really good sign that actually none of your bras fit. Um, <laughs> but strapless bras just don't have the straps to uh, pretend that they're giving you support, which they're not. So if you have a strapless bra and it's always falling down, uh, the bad news is you need to just get new bras and get a fitting. But the good news is um, that uh, there is still hope for you. Um, I just don't know what that hope is because I don't have any strapless bras I like right now. But they exist. Um, okay, and then we have a push-up bra. And a push-up bra is the early 2000s Victoria's Secret Darling. This is a great example. If you ever see those ads that are like, bras haven't been redesigned in a hundred years. Um, an incredible example of how that simply is not true is uh, first look at the <laughs> look at the bras we have today. A um, lot of bralettes, a lot of online minimal bras, uh, even the ones we had in the 90s, pretty similar. And then look at the early 2000s Victoria's Secret push-up bras and the bullet bra, bras are being redesigned constantly uh, into shapes that just would not have been popular the decade before. Push-up bra is a bra that gives you extra padding at the bottom or side of the bra. Uh, it's designed to push breast tissue up to give the impression of fuller breasts. Um, there is nothing wrong with push-up bras, but I will say that often a well-fitting bra will achieve the same thing as a push-up bra without the extra padding. So the Notori Feathers, which I recommended as a t-shirt bra, uh, gives you great cleavage <laughs> if that's what you're looking for and uh, you think that you can't get it. A well-fitting plunge bra can offer that. Uh, and again, I'm sorry, I don't have any recommendations here. I'm sure there are good push-up bras out there, but the quality of the push-up bras I've encountered have not been good enough that I would really be willing to stand by them or wear them in my day to day. And then we have the bralette. So a bralette is a bra with no wire and usually no padding. They're different from a wire-free bra in that a wire-free bra is a bra that is designed to give you support from the cups in the same way that a, a traditional wired bra would, but without the wire. 
Uh, whereas a bralette is built more similarly to a cami or a sports bra. I would say in general, a good rule of thumb, if there's no wire and no padding, it's a bralette. If there's no wire, but there is padding, uh, it can be a bralette, but you just would look to see how it's sized. If it's sized like a traditional bra, maybe it's a wire-free bra. If it's sized, uh, you know, small, medium, large, it's probably a uh, bralette. I like bralettes much better than wire-free bras. Bralettes can give a fair bit of support if you are willing to find a bralette that really fits you right. Um, I love cup-sized bralettes. I think that they work really well. They're very comfortable um, and they give a lot of support. They're great. I love them. Sports bras. Uh, and this is the last <laughs> category. I feel like there must be some that I'm missing, but these are all of the categories that I look for when I'm looking for bras. So, I don't know. Let me know if there are other bra types you want. Sports bra. This is a bra for sports. They usually use either compression or a wire and then kind of band of support to uh, provide support while you're doing sports. People have very different preferences on this. I really, I like both. Um, I do really like a wired sports bra um, when you are using it and working out. It is nice. Everything is just not moving, but it's not squished. Um, it's great. I really like them. Uh, but I also really like some sports bras that use more compression. If you have bigger breasts and a smaller rib cage, you might want to try a wired sports bra. Um, I think they are very good. But yeah, if not, there are plenty of good sports bras that are just kind of compression based. It's really the kind of thing where you're going to know if you want to try something else. Uh, but if what you have is working, awesome. That's it. Well, I hope this was helpful. I kind of tried to go based on what questions I got when I worked in a store um, and what words I was surprised to learn when I started training there. But again, please let me know if there are other questions you have. And if I see the same ones popping up, then I'll try and do a video about any of those topics. Good luck in searching for your bra uh, or not searching for your bra. I hope you have a great day. I'll talk to you next time. Bye. <laughs>